Never mind that. Let's watch this. I started out uh, dreaming of being a writer, and then I wanted to be a painter. But I was good at neither one. <laughs> so what I did is take two ineptitudes and make one aptitude. <laughs> and and uh, I, I really, suddenly, it came upon a field which was there waiting for the, the, the talents, however limited, that I had. Well, we've been exclusively doing Will's work. He's a giant in the field. Uh, this, I think, is his 55th year doing comics. He was there at the birth of comics. And he's somebody who not only spans the history of comics, but he's been an innovator all the way. He's been someone that other cartoonists mimicked and looked to for inspiration. Charles Schultz may be richer and Garfield may be better known, but Will Eisner was the best of the first and the first of the best. So happy 50th birthday to the spirit from Commander Rick. Hit it, Nancy. <laughs> Anti-Semitism in Eastern Europe. Here's a vote that the English only signed 40,000 tons of oil with PCBs blew up the ozone layer today. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Greetings down there on Earth. This is Commander Rick hijacking your signal from my perch high up in space. You know, living up here in a communication satellite, watching TV all day, I've realized we live in an age of excess. Well, you live in an age of excess. I'm stuck up here drinking my own sweat to get by. But you can't really blame people for pigging out and being excessive these days. I mean, we have Stone Age bodies in a silicon chip world. Human taste buds were designed to taste nuts and berries, and suddenly we've developed chocolate sundaes and, and a nice thick corned beef sandwich with a pickle on the side. Our caveman ancestors in their whole lives never tasted anything as delicious as what you probably scarfed down for breakfast today. In their whole lives they never saw anything as amazing as a music video or as comfortable as a waterbed or as exciting as rock and roll. It's no wonder people pig out on pleasures these days. The, the pleasures are so incredible. Some comics and a lot of movies are pigging out on excess today, too. You know, tasty little tidbits that really have nothing to do with reality, like arms ripped off, heads exploding, things like that. Hey, it's easy to do, so why not? A better question might be why. In 1940, when Will Eisner created The Spirit, life was a lot simpler. And in the 50 years since, everything has changed. Everything, technology, society, morality, religion, the family, housing has changed. But there is one thing that has not changed. We have the same bodies. These are the same bodies and the same brains, basically, that we've had for tens of thousands of years. And that's why after 55 years in comics, Will Eisner remains on the cutting edge, because he writes about that one constant, that one thing that never changes, human beings. And that's why we have to talk about him today. Comic books began in 1935, uh, when uh, some very enterprising publisher put together daily strips, pasted them together into a magazine format, uh, eight and a half by 11 size format, and uh, with, the title was Famous Funnies. Uh, it became very popular, sold very well, and a lot of publishers followed suit, and that gave way to uh, the production of original art material, original stories, which gave me my start in my career. That's, that's where I came on the scene. Well, uh, well, Eisner and I went to do with Clinton in the Bronx together, and we were on the Clinton News. And Will Eisner always got more of his drawings in the Clinton News than I, and I was always jealous of that. And uh, he was a better artist than I. And, and then, uh, ironically and prophetically, he left, graduated, and I won an art scholarship to an art school in New York at the Flatiron Building for, for two years. And, uh, so I was doodling, and, and, and then on the side I was trying to crack the cartoon market, and he went into partnership with a fellow called Jerry Iger, and became Eisner and Iger. I formed a partnership with Iger. Uh, I was 19 years old at the time, after having... Uh, and we saw the audience then as juveniles. Uh, we call them 10-year-old 
uh, kids uh, from Kansas City. Uh, the main thrust of comics at those days were, were, for, uh, were aimed at children, at youngsters. Uh, the stories were simplistic stories. Generally, they were imitations of, uh, of the classic adventure stories. Uh, some of them were imitations of the uh, daily strips that were prevalent of the day, because in those days, adventure continuity daily strips dominated the story field. But there was one other ingredient that I saw as a tremendous opportunity, which gave me a source of, inf of, of material, and that was the pulps. The pulps at that moment were dying. Now, I don't know if you remember what the pulps were, but the pulps were the forerunner of what you see today as paperbacks. They contained short stories, some of the great short story writers with illustrations. Uh, and uh, I brought uh, that idea into the, into the comics we were doing at the time. But it wasn't until the spirit days that I began doing more adult material. The Register and Tribune Syndicate and Arnold wanted a, a, what they called in those days a costume character, and what we call today superhero characters. Uh, Superman had begun to uh, make its name and was very, getting very, very popular. Uh, Batman had just arrived. Uh, and. Uh, they felt that that was the thing they wanted to have. They, they wanted to get somebody to give them a superhero character or a costume character. Well, I didn't want to do that. All I wanted was a character that would give me a detective story, rather, that, that would give me the uh, opportunity to write the kind of stories I would like to write. Uh, and w w it required then a character that, was ca uh, that, that had dimensions to it. But to accommodate them, I, I said, OK, I'll give him a costume. And I put a mask on his face and a, and a pair of gloves and this blue suit. The mask ultimately was really one of the biggest problems I have had in all the years. Because uh, to show a man walking down the subway uh, talking to people wearing a mask and nobody paying any attention to the fact that you know, it was total idiocy. But it worked for a while. When the spirit came out, it was different, really different. And it was an insert in a, in a, in a magazine. There were seven pages inside, you know, in sepia. There you and it was an expensive magazine because they were buying these reprints. And I was going to elementary school. And it came out Wednesdays. And it was the only day that I skipped the bus because the, the guy will deliver the comics to the door of my neighbor, which could afford them, put them in the doorsteps with a newspaper and everything. And I will hide on the steps until the delivery man will leave. Then I will read the spirit, put it back, and run all the way to school. And I arrive probably an hour late. But like every Wednesday, I arrive an hour late. The teachers thought it was something that I had to do at the house, so I never got caught by anybody. But that was how important it was to me. It was a routine. It was a, 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 re, a ritual for me to read the spirit. First, because there were seven pages. They were finished, they were concise, they were, had a beginning, a middle, and an end. The characters were totally developed. They had a lot of humor and a lot of adventure and a mystery. And it was an era that it was still very close as the space and the moon is to the new kids. That field of mystery was alive in the 40s. It was just after the war and there were spies and the, it was perfect. It was a so beautiful, and uh, all his collaborators and everything had done such a team that it was just perfection to, to read. Even in translation, it, it worked very well. And all the special effects on the first page with the drips and the, it was, it was magic.